Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, she kept having a dream of being in a horrific car accident. And then it actually happened. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Then it is, and 855-853-4802 is our phone number for you to share your real ghost stories with us. We would love to hear them. And uh, you can also write in at realghoststoriesonline.com if you want access to all of our bonus episodes, all of our advanced episodes, the whole archive. All you got to do is uh, go to ghostpodcast.com, patreon.com slash realghoststories, or directly through Apple Podcasts. You can go there and uh, also get access to all of the bonus material ad-free in advance. Binge away all you want. You'll love it. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode. And yes, this looks looks like an interesting one. I'm always kind of scared where it's like foretelling of horrible accidents and how does the story end? But it's um, really this is a really interesting story. And it's um we'll we'll talk on the other side of it, but I think it's really, really interesting. Okay, let's uh let's jump into it. Hi. Hello, this is Matthew Kennedy calling from Kenora, Ontario in Canada. Me and my seven-year-old daughter are huge fans of your show we've been listening to it constantly lately she's here with me her name's river say hi hi yeah (laughs) so basically uh river convinced me to call in with an interesting story about um my grandmother my grandparents um both my grandparents passed away in a fatal car accident, actually, the day before I was born, if you can believe it. I was born on September 29th, 1985, and uh, they passed away on the 29th, right? Uh, and my mom got word of it right as she was going into labor and going to the hospital to have me. Um, so the interesting thing about this story is that um, my grandmother supposedly foretold her own death and uh, we want to call and tell you that story so here's how it goes so my grandparents were visiting my mother in the Kenora area in mid-August of 1985 I'm my grandmother was 63 and my grandpa was 66 and um, towards the end of their visit in Kenora my grandmother had a dream and unfortunately my mom can't remember the exact details of the dream But my grandmother said that this dream meant that someone was going to die. And at the time, two of my mother's uncles were very ill, uh, one with cancer and one with emphysema. So she just said, well, that must be who you're thinking is going to die. Um, But my grandma said it seemed likely that um, somebody was going to pass away soon for some reason from this dream. And my mom just kind of brushed it off and said to, uh, to my grandfather, oh, mom's on us. Someone's going to die, kick. So they drove home there. My grandparents are from Southern Ontario, so they returned to Southern Ontario. But then another dream started to happen. And uh, she would dream every night about a car accident after that. And in the car accident, she would see my mother's sister, my Auntie Debbie. And she started to get concerned. And so she told my Auntie Debbie, please drive so carefully because I'm having this dream. And she would describe it to my grandfather uh, and they would speak of it and how it was uh, kind of driving the family nuts because she was going on about it again and again. But she would describe the detail of the dream, and it was always the same dream where they're driving in a car. My Auntie Debbie, though, in the dream is driving in a car, and it's hit on its side by a gray half-ton pickup truck, and the car would roll over three times and end up in the ditch, with this pickup truck stopping on top of the car. So they end up piled up. And she kept having the stream for weeks and it was driving my Auntie Debbie nuts and, and my grandfather because she would bring it up basically every day. And eventually she called my Auntie Debbie over to her house on a Tuesday 
and said, please just drive so carefully. I'm still having this dream. And now my Auntie Debbie was starting to get pretty scared because uh, her mom just wouldn't let this go. And she left and drove herself to work. And she was very nervous driving herself to work at this point. But life went on. My grandparents went to church on that morning, September 29th. Uh, they had coffee for an hour with their friends from church. And it was a really beautiful September day. And there'd actually been uh, some tornadoes in the area. But this was a beautiful day. Uh, so they went to get um, my grandfather's brother and sister-in-law. That would be my great aunt and uncle, Joan and Richard. And he said, you know what, let's go for a drive today. It's a beautiful day. So uh, they said, yeah, let's go for a drive up and see some of those farms that got wrecked in the tornado and, uh, you know, see how the rebuilding process is going. So they picked them up. They had a new car that uh, my mother had actually bought them as a gift. And they went out in the car with my grandpa in the driver's seat, my grandma behind him in the rear passenger seat, my great uncle, Richard in the passenger seat in the front and my great aunt Joan in the uh, rear passenger seat. So men in the front and the women in the back. Uh, they drove out to see uh, those farms. They picked them up in Fergus, Ontario and went for this quiet drive and they were in the area of Palmerston, Ontario. And they were going through this intersection and apparently my uh, grandfather saw an approaching truck as they were about to go through an intersection. But it was a four-way intersection and the truck had a stop sign, so he started to proceed out. And then at the last minute, he cried out to my Uncle Richard, I don't think that guy's going to stop. And then he turned the wheel sharply to try and get out of the way, but it was too late. The truck ran the stop sign and slammed into the side of them. The car flipped over three times. They were hit on the left side with the gray half-ton landing right on top, exactly the way that my grandmother had had the dream. My grandparents died instantly uh, My, because they were both on the left side of the car. My grandmother uh, died of a broken neck. Grandfather died of a broken rib that uh, pierced his heart in the impact. And uh, my uncle, great uncle Richard and Aunt Joan, they survived and they were able to tell the story of the crash, which is how we know the details. And, uh, but have had permanent injuries for the rest of their lives. And so, as I said in the beginning, um, my grandmother was warning my Auntie Debbie over and over again, you know, please be careful where you're driving and keep having this dream over and over. Will you die the exact way of this accident? And uh, my mother feels that she was actually seeing herself in the car because my Auntie Debbie and my grandmother in profile look almost exactly the same. So again and again, she was having this dream that what I guess was trying to warn her that uh, she was going to die in this car accident and that's exactly how it happened. And I just missed it. I just missed meeting them by one day because as I said, they died the day before I was born. So grandparents left and then I showed up. But thanks for hearing our story. Hopefully uh, me and River will get to hear it on the show. Right, River? Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Reminds me of Harper. I think Harper I started on the show at about the age of seven, honestly. Um, I know. It totally makes me think of the relationship between you and Harper because they listen to the show together. Yeah. No, that's, so that's that awesome. That was so cute. I caught a little bit of you and Harper the other day because I, I confess I don't listen to the show all that often um, uh, because I'm doing other shows and I don't have time to right. listen. Um, but, uh, oh, my goodness. I mean, she last time me and her did a show together was probably, a, I don't know, four or five months ago. Um, and I know you and her have been doing him, but I was like, oh, my God, she sounds so much more mature on the I air know, now doesn't she? than even just like a few months ago. I was like, oh, my goodness. She's grown up so fast. I know, I know. Um, it's a weird dynamic to grow up with, with having grandparents that died. My grandparents died in a car accident before I was born as well. Um, not oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it, not like the day before, but a couple years before. Um, but they were both killed uh, on impact. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that that's very interesting to hear that story and those perspectives, and uh, you know, kind of the insight and and the feelings that were uh, observed there. To me, like it's such a it's such an incredibly sad story. Number one, yeah. 
But it's very interesting at the same time because she was having this dream and she thought it was going to happen to um, the Aunt Deb. Mm -hmm. So she thought it was going to happen to her, but it didn't. It actually happened. What she dreamt and she had shared the dream actually is the way she died. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting that that's even like, how does that work and how can you have this recurring dream that plays out how you're going to die. Well, if you've discovered like you have a dream that plays out how you die in a car, you just simply never get in a car again for the rest of your life. And, and in then... her case, it wasn't her that was dying <laughs> no. in the car. Yeah. It was that. So now the aunt. You restrain your relatives. <laughs> exactly. Like you could never get in the car again. Yeah. And then to that would be such a strange feeling too, to think number one, like to have someone share that dream with you and be like, man, I keep having this dream about you. You're killed in a car wreck. Yeah. My God, how do you deal with that? And then when you hear it did happen and everything that had been shared with you came true, but it happened to your sister. Yeah. Or I'm assuming it was a sister. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. That is just crazy. And then just one day prior, they died and then never even got to meet him. Yeah. And the poor mom having to go into labor and deliver this baby and hearing that horrific <sighs> news, I can't imagine the range of emotions that went along with that. The stress that you're under at that moment <laughs> and then you add that to it. No, that's yeah. horrible. Yeah. It was such a, it's so incredibly sad and so incredibly interesting at the same time. Thank you for sharing that story with with us. I hope you Hi, and River, River continue to uh, enjoy the show together. Uh, I'll let uh, Harper know that uh that you're listening uh, cause she always gets a kick out of it when she knows that somebody kind of her age is like into the show too so um and i know there's a lot of people out there but i'll just i'll let her know she'll get a kick out of that when i see her in a little bit all right that's gonna wrap up today's episode of real ghost stories online if you like the show keep us on the air becoming a supporter of ours a premium subscriber through uh, apple Podcasts. you can do that right there or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or uh, ghostpodcast.com our original source for that still there you can get all the uh, bonus content right there and binge away at any time. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.